Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Has the baby fully come out yet? He's been crushed through the three things he's dying. Every year in Britain, 12 million people dial 999 for an emergency ambulance. More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You were bred to a red place. He's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Don? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade... Go in his hand! The head's here! The head's here, Neely! Yeah! Oh, come! You can! ...for our public services, a situation that is now critical. Look my phone somewhere for and I thought, just say there's no bits. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Got nothing else? OK. The failure of the system. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. What is he doing? Right, all right, just, just one minute. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. OK, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to use 50 seconds. In the control room... Confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. And on the ground. Sorry for your loss. As the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you with blue lights and sirens as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing, can you see the helicopter? You're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the sirens. Get out of the way. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. What is well, I don't know. No, he's not. All right, can you get any response from him at all? No, none at all. All right, so can you say the word now for me every time we take a breath? Now. And the next one? Have you taken another one? No. He can stop breathing. Listen to me then. Pull him onto the floor for me. It's really important. He's a big man. We can't get him on. Johnny, listen. Put the phone to one side and go and help them. It's an hour and a half into the Saturday night shift. The CPR call in progress is a Category 1, the most life-threatening. Put the heel of your hand in the centre of his chest and the other hand on top of it. Press down on his chest at least two inches where you keep your arms straight and don't be afraid to push too hard. It's one of 193 999 calls the West Midlands Ambulance Service is currently dealing with. Do it at the rate of 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3. Five miles away, crewmates Katie and Sarah have just become free. Rowdy Regis, unconscious, not breathing. CPR in progress. One and two and three. A little bit quicker for me. One and two and three. One and two and three. That's it. Count for half. I can hear you doing it. One, two, three. We're doing really well. We're going to do as quickly as we can. I don't know. It's for ages. No. I can't even remember the last one I did. This is the first one I've done since I've been back on the road. Come on, Terry. They need me to be to come. We did not be that We are coming as quickly as we can. There's nothing happening. Keep going, though. What? You've got your stick in your pocket, haven't you? Yeah. Can you take your stick? I'll grab the suction I'll and take in the ILS bag. Yeah. I get nervous. I, I try and keep it under wraps, but deep down, you know, this person's life is in your hands and it's your responsibility not to get it wrong. Katie and Sarah are nine minutes from the patient's house. With the patient's heart stopped, two crews are needed for the best chance of survival, so a second ambulance is on its way. Is he breathing? I don't know. Me. Have a look at his breathing. Look at his chest. No, not at all. Keep going with the chest compression. One. That's it. Keep going. We're coming as quickly as we can. Do not try and walk out. Jesus Christ. I think he actually thought we were going to let him go. Come on, Terry. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop until they tell you to. The other crew arrives first. Three. One. Two. Three. I won't leave you until I can hear them in the room, okay? The patient's wife has been doing CPR for eight and a half minutes. He's on the sofa. He said, sort of jolty, made a noise and went down. What's his name? Has he ever had any cardiac events or anything? No. I said nothing, so he normally fit around. Come on, Terry, come on. That's it, Terry. What's your name, sweetheart? Yeah. Are you Terry's wife, Terry? Yeah. Yeah. Can you charge that, mate? Yeah. OK, everyone clear? So, first shock. Has anyone got time? Programmes on TV and reality are quite different things. 
people will get their hopes up because of what they've seen on TV, where their loved one has CPR performed and then they're back to life and it's all happy. But the chances of that happening are quite slim. I've been to 15 cardiac arrests. Only two survived long enough to be discharged home. Sarah, can, if you get the flush out and stuff, I'll just swap yeah. over. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, charging again. Everyone clear? Yeah. yeah. Back on the chest. Check pulse. Clear, yeah. Back on the chest. All your adrenaline's going because this is it. You've, it's, it's now or never. You have got to do absolutely everything you can because as time goes on, chance of survival decreases. Okay, adrenaline just going in now. We've not got nothing, have we? It's 26 minutes since Terry first went into cardiac arrest. Okay, I'm all clear. Yeah, press it. Yeah, yeah. is going so I can go in the one at the back okay because we're we'll obviously being quite yeah that's absolutely fine we need quite a lot of space all right at the moment he has got a pulse but things can change all right sweetheart I don't want to get your hopes up all right and um, we'll get him straight to the hospital now all right that's it it's the ambulance we're going to get you to the hospital now sweetheart really well right then I'm great one two okay we're gonna have to go up more can you support that arm Sit with me, with me, with me. Right, okay. Right, let's feel this. Send your arm, Terry, that's it. He's gagging now as well. Yeah. He's definitely got a pulse. We're going to put a mask on your face. You've got a blink there as well. I'm going to take this ambulance. They're going to take I'm Terry. You can both come. That's not a problem. All right. I'm just going to shut your doors now. All right, Chuck. Sure. You two have a seat there. Okay. At this point, it, it's difficult to know. He's making a really, really good effort at the moment. A really good He's effort. A yeah. He's a yeah. And I can see that. He is fighting. Well, we'll do our best for him and we'll get him there as quickly as we can, all right, my love? Shall we see what we were talking about the holiday today, what we were going to do and what we'd planned to do. I've got to get into him. I've got to get into him. I've got to see him. I've got to make him fight. It's all right, ladies. All right. I'll take you inside, don't worry. They'll have taken him straight through to the resource area. It may just be for the first sort of five, ten minutes. They may just need you to wait. Go ahead, Ada. In the control room, team three are four hours into their Saturday night shift. All right, mate, I'll speak to you in a bit, OK? Give us an update. Give us an update. Controllers Glenys and Richard are responsible for sending all ambulances across Birmingham tonight. Patient, 41 weeks pregnant, and she's urging to push. So I'll try and get you a second vehicle, and I'll get you another update shortly, Ada. News of Katie and Sarah's Rost getting a patient's pulse back is filtering through. Trouble 4 and I went out to the cardiac arrest to the 75-year-old patient. The crew got there, yeah. got an output, and it's a Rosk. Oh, nice one. Which means he's alive. A Rosk is awesome for ourselves and for the staff, but it's just maintaining that then and seeing how we get on with the uh, patient's condition. The next few hours will be crucial. 
my very first cardiac arrest, we got a ROSC and she was discharged from hospital two really? weeks later, yeah. I've never known any of mine. Yeah. In fact, she is probably the best ROSC I've ever had. Really? Mm -hmm. Normally, it was good. I get a ROSC and they go and doctors call it in recess. I whispered to you, we need to turn the telly I, to, I think we just happened to glance at the telly at the same point and all I saw was an ambulance and I just thought, nurse. oh my yeah. God, casualties are. How inappropriate. <laughs> Rob, a 32-year-old female with left-hand side lower back pain. Just getting a few jobs in now, it's getting busy now. There are 51 ambulances on shift in Birmingham at the moment, but all of them are tied up with patients. So we've got three outstand four outstanding nines. We've got RTCs we can't cover. Um, I've got a middle back injury from an RTC, that's another job. Every person that rings for an ambulance, it's their emergency, but I have to take on everybody's tragedy. It's all right in an ideal world when you've got lots of ambulances, it's fine, but when you haven't, you're having to prioritise. Right, we've got 33-year-old kicked in the knee. He needs to just wait, wait for the ambulance because that won't be coming any time soon. That's obviously, thank you. Um, I'll book you clear. If you can just stand by for the moment because we are stacking a few nines of it. As pubs begin to close, the 999 calls pour in. Yeah, this is the patient breathing. Um, yeah, but he's hurt himself quite badly. OK, what's he done? He's had a few many drinks and he's completely collapsed and he's nearly got run over about three times. What's the idiot? Look at the state. Yeah, how old are you? What's the reason for the call? Oh, just fell over, blood everywhere. He peeked out of his head, but just can you come please? There's blood everywhere. Oh, I've got a 62-year-old chap, he's fallen over, he can't get up, he's hurt his knee. Oh, right, OK. What's the address of the emergency? He sleeps on phone, he's near the paddock. You called say that he had injured your knee and you couldn't walk. Yeah. Can I ask where about you are, please? Yeah, I'm in an alleyway. You're in an alleyway? Yeah, I'm in a cul-de-sac in an alleyway here, babe. Yeah. In an alleyway in a cul-de-sac? Yeah. OK, let me just have a little look on the map where my ambulance crew are, so I can... Fine, okay, yeah. Are you able to shuffle on your bottom so you're visible from the street for me at all? I know you can't stand I can't, I can't stand up. I'm going to tell the crew to put the lights and sirens on, all right, and see if we can hear them. Thank you. Can you put your lights and sirens on just quickly, see if the patient can hear them? Ongi and Maria are near to where the patient says he is. Yep, they're on. Can you go and jump in line, yeah? Yeah. Fine, let's go, yeah. Fine, let's go. Farnhurst Road. Farnhurst, I've got you now. They're not in the right place. They need to go down Farnhurst Road. Farnhurst. Apparently, you need to go down Farnhurst Road. Um, is he on Farnhurst Road then? I don't know where he is. I don't think he knows where he is. Can you see the ambulance yet? No. It's really really dark. Okay, they're, they're being as quick as they can. I bet it is cold on the floor. We'll get you in a nice warm ambulance in a bit. We just need to get the crew to you. It does look like a bit of a rabbit warren there. We see lots of little alleyways. Hello? Morris! 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 Is there anybody down there with you? Morris! How long is it going to be back? I can't, I'm scared of. I know that, sweetheart, I know that. And I know you're uncomfortable being as quick as we can. Can you hear any voices? No. Whilst on the phone to Morris, 48 new 999 calls come in including several fights. The four crews can be aware of High Street in Dudley and surrounding streets. I believe there is a fight in progress. There's several fights ongoing at the moment. I, I don't know what's happening, but I know it's, it's uh, quite tense in the city centre at the moment. Ambulance service, I can help the list. Um, it looks like there's ten people fighting. Oh, okay. Can I send more than one page then, please? Might need, uh, uh, might be numerous patients here. We're getting quite a lot of calls as well. Oh, crikey. Okay. I'll take it on route tonight, please. We are, mate. We've got five units on the way to this one. Crikey, I can be. Uh, Reports of one that's been hit by a car. I'm in the alleyway. Okay. I know you're in the alleyway, but you know when you, you walk into the cul-de-sac. Have you seen this RTC, Julia? This is a big fight going on. Right, warn the crew. There's a fight in progress. No, there's a fight in progress and that somebody's been hit by a car. Yeah. Tell them not to approach till we've got police there. There's a fight in progress and a person's been hit by a car. Uh, police are on route. Um, this is done by safe distance. Mark and Jacob are three miles from the fight. 
paramedic manager James is also en route to coordinate the scene with the other emergency services. Is the BMW X5? There's no way I'm going to be able to beat him in this thing. I'm going to expect a lot of people around, though. Yeah, it could be a bit carnage. They arrive in seven minutes. There's a few uh, cop shop vehicles about. Apparently got an injury to his arm. It's possibly a bit stabbed or something. Okay. okay. All right, fella. All right, let's have a look at this arm. That's where it's trying to stop me. You should gone through the top. What do you reckon that was? A shank? Not even a shank is. I really have the TV. That's what I reckon it is. Couldn't tell you, to be honest, mate. There is a further casualty. Is that? Query, baseball bat. Yeah, yeah. I'll go in there and check him. Yeah. Oh. While Jacob stays with the man with suspected stab wounds, Mark and James prioritise the more seriously injured man, who they think's been attacked with a baseball bat. Hello. I'm just going to get you sorted out now, all right? I'm just going to quit listening to your breathing, OK? You weren't knocked out, were you? I just remember I couldn't see properly and I was okay. <coughs> You feel sick? Try and keep your neck still, if you can. Upgraded to a red. A second ambulance has been requested. But worried about the man's neck and how long it'll take to arrive on a busy Saturday night, James contacts control. This gentleman needs to be a mobile and been back with a bad back. He's conscious and breathing, but looks tight, so um, I prefer them not to be diverted. Yeah, Roger, I'll get it sorted, stand by. Breen, uh, case 14, can you upgrade it to a red, please? He's been badly beaten. 14, top mate. The fight victim is the highest priority patient currently in Birmingham. He takes Glennis's last ambulance. Seven other patients in the city will now be left waiting until a new crew becomes free. It's going to be horrible night tonight. Really horrible. We know it's going to be horrible now. So I'm going to have to come under his shoulder as well. Okay. I'm going to support your neck. All right, keep nice and still. We're going to lower you to the floor, onto this board, all right? And lower then. Ready, set. Lower. Well done, mate. Okay, then. Keep nice and still. All right. Relax back. Good lad. Well done. All right, all right, all right. Perfect. If someone's severely beaten, especially around the head and neck, it's going to cause serious damage to the point where they might not walk again. Keep nice and still for me, mate, okay? In reality, it's, it's going to affect not just the person that's injured, but the family, and then the repercussions for that sort of escalate out. It's like a ripple effect. Okay. Yeah. Is your side in? Yeah, it's reduced Doing really well. I am surprised what people would do to each other. It's, it's almost like it's out of a film. One, two, three. But in the film, people would take a knife wound but get up and still carry on fighting. When in reality, that doesn't happen. Well done, mate. Go. The gentleman, uh, approximately two zero twenty year old male, been assaulted with a baseball bat uh, with numerous uh, external injuries. He's immobilised, pain relief on route, off scene now for Hartland, EDA 08 minutes. You happy for us to go, James, yeah? Yeah, Blues and twos, mate, all the way in. How's your pain at the moment, mate? Right, I'm going to use the power set more, okay? Intravenously, I'm going to look after you, bud. So, do you remember what happened then? I just remember getting chased with a baseball bat. Yeah. And then. I just remember I was getting carried into the area. Right, okay. And then I was on the floor. Yeah. And then I, I stood up, but I couldn't, I couldn't feel my legs probably. Okay. Do you remember what the incident was all about? What, why it all started? Yeah, yeah. Um, I outside. I don't expect fights to be over important things. Being chivalrous, protecting your family, and your loved ones. But it ends up being as over really silly, petty things. When really we should just be nice to each other and get along. It would make my job ten times easier. We're just put into the hospital now, all right? There's going to be doctors asking you questions and prodding and poking you, yeah. all right? Yeah. Completely normal. We've seen it on casualty a million times. I'm not a big fan of blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're doing all right, mate. You're doing all right. Oh. <sighs> what we'll do is we'll just get you to sit outside for a second before we get to hand over to doctors. And once everything's set, we'll get you in. Just two miles away, Ungi and Maria have been searching for their patient, Morris, for nearly half an hour. We've had a look down those ones and we couldn't see him down there. Um, have you got your sirens on now? Put your sirens on. 
Oh, 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 stand out to me again. Yes. I'm sure that's different to what you told me first. You come to the bottom of Farnhurst Road, and what did you do? First left. Left. Left, 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 and right. right. Okay, so we're going to have to start again. Can you go down to the bottom of Ash, Ash Home Road and turn right? They're on the way. And there's a cul de sac, and a couple of young men is going to right. turn them down. There is in York Drive, there's a cul de sac. Oh, the ambulance crew should be coming around the corner, so hopefully we'll be there with you in a minute. Oh, there you go. Hello, yeah. 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 straight down there, yeah. Yes. I'm not going to get any. Yeah, there he is. Thank you for that, guys. Hello, is it Morris? How are you doing, buddy? My name's Ongi. Sorry we took so long to get to you. We were trying to find where you were. Thanks for that. What have you done, buddy? You've done a lot of work. Oh, dear. Let's have a quick feel of your wrist there. So what happened? You just tripped over and went down? Yeah. OK. Thanks. Have you hurt your neck at all? No, just that. Nothing more impressive here at all? OK. Did you land full force just on that one knee there? Just fell down, that was it. You weren't knocked out? You didn't lose consciousness or anything? No. Nope. OK, what we'll do, we'll get the stretch out of the ambulance and we'll get you on that. Get you into the warmth and then we'll have a good look at you in there, OK? So you're off the floor. Who do you live with? I lost my parents. Well, OK. You're living on your own dad. at the minute? Mum and Dad, though, OK, has it been a long time since they've gone? Very dear. OK. OK, yeah, well, let's get a pop of splints on it. We'll just pop a little splint on this leg to support it and keep it still. All right, and then we'll get you up onto the stretcher. Is that like a plan? Yeah. Bless you. How old are you? 62. 62. I mean, I'll be 63 in April with a bit of luck. Touch with it. We'll support you. OK, just be wary of this leg trying to catch it on the stretcher as you bring it up. OK. okay. On three, Morris. Okay. On three, Morris, push up on this good leg and we'll pull you up. I won't tap it. You will. Ready? On three. Ready? One, two, three. Push up push on up. your good leg. Ah! I've got your leg. Pull that one up as well, buddy. Hang on, baby. We got it. Let's cover you up, keep you warm. At least you're off the floor now. Off the floor? Here we go, buddy. Ready? Little bump. I'll just shut the doors too. Right. We'll get the heaters on to keep you warm. Other than the pain in your knee, any pain anywhere else at all? No. Okay. Can you wiggle your toes on this foot? Okay. So obviously we don't know what you've done to that knee, because we, we can't see into it. It doesn't look too badly deformed or anything like that. We'll pop you down the hospital and get them to have a look at it and see what's going on. You got any other family that are, are around? Any brothers, sisters, partner, children? No. Nothing no. at all? Do you live alone? I live alone, but I a cat. What's your cat called? Libby. Debbie. Libby. Libby. I don't know where she is now. She's probably at home waiting for me to come back. How are you coping at home? All right. Do you need any more support or help? I don't support words for him. Yeah? Just pulling into the hospital now, Morris. Well, you're tired, aren't you? Yeah. What time are you three? Seven in the morning. Good morning, mate. Hello. Long day, isn't it? Another six hours, fifteen minutes to go. Will you have a day out? Uh, no, I'm back in tonight. Yeah. Do it all again. Bonkers. Don't make that, do it. Ready? Steady. Go. go. Couple of bumps then. Roger will do. Thank you. Standing by. We've got 13 outstanding jobs. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. They're all uh, bleeding, alcohol-related, overdoses, assault, drink-related. Then they're having a fight and then they feel sick. Oh, we've just had a call from police to say that this patient's been glassed and they are requ we are required. But I still haven't got anybody. I've been doing this job now 20 years. 
when I first started, if you had a stabby, it was like, oh my god, I got a stabby. But now, it's matter of fact, it's like the weapons they use, glasses, hammers, knives, you name it, they'll use it. It worries me. I don't like going to pubs and things if I don't know people, because I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, I hope nothing happens. So that, that's the way the job affects me. Bear with us, Mullab, OK? We're exceptionally busy across the area with uh, life-threatening cases, but we are getting to patients as fast as we can. On this Saturday night, the ambulance service has dealt with nearly one and a half thousand patients, 20% up on a weeknight. I need a nice extra large coffee. I might even have two. One of their first patients of the shift, Terry, who was in cardiac arrest, has survived through till morning. It's the start of a new shift for Team 3. 4453, four, Roger, thank you. Good morning, I'll get you booked on. I hope you have a good shift. Sun is shining, the weather is... This day makes me happy. 94 ambulance crews are on duty today across Birmingham and the Black Country. Good morning, I'll get you booked on. Have a good shift. We're looking for the day, so we'll have no problem. <laughs> oh, you've said it now. The sunny part, I hope it remains sunny. I've got my Ray-Bans on, so I'm all set for the day home. You good to go? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely take the coat off now. Ambulance services patient breathing. Yes, my wife is, is nine months pregnant. Right, so is she in, is she in labour? Do you think? I think so, but I don't understand why he's breathing. Has she got bleeding from vagina right now? I don't know. No, we need to know now. Can you ask her right now if he's losing blood? Uh, yes. Okay. If you touch your stomach, does that make her? Is that hurt her? If you touch it gently on the stomach? Yes. It does hurt her if you touch it. Yes. Oh, here we go. Natalie and Nat are nearest to the maternity corps. It's a 25-year-old female, uh, 40 weeks pregnant, that's bleeding. It doesn't say that the patient's got an urge to push. If you give us an early update, that'd be great. Oh, gosh, you will do. Uh, yeah, we'll let you know when we're there, over. Roger, thank you. Funny boy. This could be happening for me. With you. Bye, baby. Bye, baby. I've not been to one on the road in the four and a half years. I have never been to one. I'm just going to stand at the bottom. Hi. It's not good though with blood bird. Huh? It's not good if it's red fresh blood. Or do we? Has she got the placenta previa though or the right. placenta abruption? Because this no, is not that. Let's not have that. I know, Matt, I know, but what's she bleeding for at 40 weeks? Oh. Suspected placenta abruption. Okay. Advanced labour. Patient in bath nine. This one. Mr. Go and get the door open for us. Okay, and I'll stand the line here with you. Is it your first baby? No, OK. Any problems with your pregnancy, my darling? No. No? Has your blood pressure been OK? Mm, same thing, small, same thing. Okay. OK. And what baby is this baby number? Uh, three. Three? Yes, I have a daughter. Yeah. My mother passed away last year. Oh, I'm sorry. And now uh, this. This one. Do you know what this one is? It's a boy. It's a boy? Yes. Lovely. Lovely. OK, then. Right. So if we get you some gas and air, darling, all right, to help you with the pain. Are you having another contraction now? No. No? Still, you just got constant pain. Yes. It's there all the time. Okay. All right, my darling. Is your last baby still born? Or yes. okay, my darling. So now this lady's on her third pregnancy. Uh -huh. Baby last year is still born. Okay. Yeah. Um it's not so much contraction anymore, it's severe, lower pain. Uh -huh. There was some blood in the toilet. Uh -huh. uh, red fresh it's blood. Yeah. Consultant led. Yeah. Consultant there because of them. Yeah. Things. Yeah. So previously they didn't find out what the cause was. No. What was your due date, darling? A couple of days early. When did he come meet you? Yeah. Come say hi. With signs of bleeding and having lost a baby already, Natalie and Nat want to get Mother Yornella to hospital as quickly as possible. She's, is this your, the bag that she's yes. packed for the hospital? Yes. Okay. Perfect, lovely. Yes. Okay, you're going to need to put a couple of those in for the little baby. <laughs> Do you feel the urge to push? Yes. All right, darling. Okay, okay. Calm down. Good breath, my darling. Okay. Try that. <laughs> 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 Good morning, Mum. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is it happening again? Yes. All right, darling. <laughs> Is it just the contractions? Yeah. Yeah? OK? It's coming down. OK. Alona. 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 All right, my darling. Do you feel you need to push? Yeah. OK. Absolutely. All right, darling. Use the gas, my darling. Big breath. 
Yunella's contractions are speeding up, and despite her history, there is no choice. The baby will need to be delivered at home. They'll need a second crew to help in case of complications. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we are going to have an, another crew um, after all, because I don't think we're going to get a chance to move with this patient, so I think we are going to need another crew, please. Uh. Lovely, thank you. So, when you contract, <laughs> your body will tell you when it's time to push. When you need to push, tell us that you need to push, and you need to push, okay? okay. <laughs> I think it's one of the hardest things when a patient tells you they've lost a child. Delivering a baby at home doesn't come without risks and as a paramedic we know our capabilities are somewhat limited. We haven't got a doctor on scene, we haven't got a theatre for an emergency caesarean, so it's a massive responsibility, massive. Well done. So they've asked for Amber back up then and the crew was showing about nine minutes away. With a second ambulance urgently needed at the maternity call, there are now just three emergency ambulances available to cover the 2.2 million people of Birmingham and the Black Country. Three new 999 calls are coming in every minute. Ambulance, sir, this is the patient reading. No, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't know. Right, OK, what's the problem? Do you know the fucking problem? Don't swear at me. The fuck you! Patient breathing? No, he's patient. dead. Not breathing. Completely dead. Yeah, it's a son is only 22 minutes old and it's got really drowsy. He's given a light shirt on his shoulders, called his hand and tell me exactly what he's doing. Can I have an, uh, an ambulance uh, urgently, please? I think a man's just had a heart attack. Is he conscious? Is he conscious? Is he conscious? No, no, no. no. oh my mean. God, he's fell in the pond. He's got to come back. Get him out of the pond? Yeah. Uh, have you just got him out of the pond? Just be second. He's out the pond, yeah. He's been fishing and he's got fell in the pond. And he's definitely yeah. not breathing. You can't see any signs of him breathing. What's the, What's the address? What's the address? Looks like Thailand's out the window for me. Why? Because these flights are just ridiculous. Darren and Mel are two miles from the pond and have just become free. I'm not going to pay like 550 quid for 10 days and the flights are going to be like what? Two days long. Yeah, 20 hours or something. I've got a job. Pavilion, Heathrow. Drowning? Uh, Airborne, well, I thank you, Todd, for the rest of these patients have been fishing. They've fallen into the pond. Now, I believe, pulled out and not breathing. Second crew responding, EPA is eight minutes away. Okie okay, dokie, okay. thanks a lot. So, what I need you to do is gently tilt his head back and lift his chin upwards and pinch his nostrils together. I need someone to put the lips around his mouth and blow steadily into the mouth to make the chest rise. Okay, have you got the ambulance on its way? We've got some help on its way too, yes. Yeah. We're going to get this guy back. But we've got a crew that's just said they're nearly there. Is someone looking for them? Yes, they're nearly there. Just, we'll, I'll get somebody up to the car park and look for them now, OK, love? Right, we'll stay on the line with you until no, we get there. OK, then. You've seen them yet? Huh? I haven't seen anyone waving. I haven't seen them. Yeah, it looks like he's getting a bit of breath now, yeah? Is he taking regular breath, though? <laughs> yeah, he's the ambulance, the ambulance, the ambulance, the Is he conscious? He is conscious. Hello, sweetheart, we're going to roll you over. Well, has he had an epileptic fit and then? It's on him. That's all we've heard. With no obvious explanation for the accident, Darren and Mel are keen to get the man into a warm ambulance as quickly as possible. Okay. One, yeah. uh, Let's get him over. Uh, all right, sweetheart. Uh, Oh, that's, that's his mobility? So he's straight in? Driven his scooter in there? Yeah, scooter's in there. He's bitten his tongue. Paramedic officer Chris has been dispatched to manage the scene so the crews can focus on the patient. Patient query driven scooter into a lake, query seizure at time. So I don't know whether he's actually still mid-seizure or whether it's just shock. We're getting him in the warm first, he's freezing. One, two, three. All right, lovely. What I'm going to do... You just try him, let's whip these off and get the dry ones on him. So he's, he's trundling, trundling, and all of a sudden, yuck. So he's been dragged. Who dragged him out? Some members. Some members of the public dragged him out. Dragged him out. 
as he was or as, as he's seen him I don't think he was breathing or he wasn't responsive at first when they got him out so well, then he's, he's come and then he's gone to this level yeah, and that's yeah. It. Just trying to work it out. He's not picking much, he? he could have, he basically he could have had a fit before he's gone in. Yeah. He could have had a fit as he was going in. Yeah. I, I don't know. Any ID that you found? Does anybody here know him? Okay. All right. Cheers, mate. Um, we're going to have the second crew travel on this one. Not happy with patient's presentation. Um, can't rule out whether he's had a stroke or anything before, and judging the way he's gone at the moment. So yeah, they're going to travel. One person's going to go in, one person's going to take the vehicle afterwards, all right? Uh, yes, yes, all received. Thanks very much, Emma. Uh, one of the crew have travelled, Jode, on 4-9. They're driving the second truck up, but the first person's travelled to treat him on the back of that, on the drowning. Been on scene for 17 minutes and we've gone, so we've took him straight in. So the crew are not messing around, really. Rather than sort of treat him, delay anything, we're getting him straight to hospital. At the moment, we've got no details, we've no medical history, no name, no age. All we know is what passers-by have told us he was on his own, so we don't know anything else at the moment. It's hard in circumstances like that because obviously we've got no indication, nothing to call him, and I don't like not knowing patients' names because I think you should always try and call them by their name, even if they are unconscious or reduced GCS, to make them more of a person. I don't think it's right to not know somebody's name. I think it's quite difficult. So we've literally, man unknown is all we've got. He could have a wife at home who has no idea. So I just hope he was found in time. Poor chappy. Uh, okay, keep pushing. Nice. Off the gas. Take it off the gas. Off, off the gas. gas. Off the gas. Push. Okay. It's been 16 minutes since Natalie and Nat decided it wouldn't be safe to transfer Unella to hospital. And they'd have to deliver the baby themselves. Okay, keep pushing. Nice and quiet. Okay. It's not. It's okay. What we're thinking there because it's like the baby to get this place. We can't monitor him, can we? We've just got no way. And it's the second, what happened in the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're worried mother and baby are getting into difficulty. We need you to do Five two, sorry. Um, yeah, we need that as a crew, ASAP, please, have a... Okay, that's it, in three miles. Nice, slow breath, you're doing really well. Another one. <laughs> hello, hello. We got here about, about 40 minutes ago, I think. We've tried to move once, it weren't happening. Obviously, we've got no way of monitoring baby, have we? And that's and that's the, that's yeah. the thing you say. Pushing, got a push. Breath, bear down, bear down. Hold your breath, good girl. You've got a push. Keep pushing. I know it's gonna hurt, sweet. I know. <laughs> they have to push the baby over a dip in the birth canal, and it's getting them through that dip that's the hardest work. So if a mum tires and she can't do it, then you start to worry about baby becoming distressed. <laughs> Listen, listen to me, listen to me. To get this baby out, you need to push it out, yeah? Every, every time you get these contractions and you feel that urge to push, you've got to really, really push. I know how horribly wrong they can go. My first two births were fine, absolutely fine. Jessica's wasn't good. I had a ruptured uterus. Subsequently, Jessica's severely disabled and has been starved of oxygen. She's 15. She's tube fed, she can't walk, she can't talk. So I know what starvation of oxygen can do. I know we've only got that 10 minute window. Okay. Ready? Right. Got to give it everything you got, yeah? Each time. Can you want to go yeah, there? if we can, yeah, absolutely. Put my hand on in, hold Natalie's hand. <laughs> Well done, well done. You just need one good push over that birth canal. Keep pushing in your bottom, right in your bottom. I you can, can, you can. You can, you can. It means we're nearly there when you feel like that, okay? I know, darling, it does. It does. We need to either really go for it here or move. So 
it's a, you know, we can't, we don't know what's happening with baby. When we get that contraction, we want to push, we've got to really push, right, so we're going to come off this. We can. How else are we going to come out? We can. We can. We want to meet him. We want to meet him, don't we? Right, up we get, up high. Got to push, got to push, guys. We can. Eight miles away, Darren and Mel have finished handing over the drowning victim to A&E staff. What was your thing? Epilepsy? Seizure. Seizure. Bleed. Bleed on his... Wow, I was thinking, yeah, his tongue's been bitten. Yeah. As we found out, as I handed him over to the doctor, he spoke for the first time, and he goes, let me die. And I was just like, ooh. What? That's I don't want to live anymore. Um, has he got like, any family? No, and I asked him, just did you have any family? And he was like, no. I said, no family. And I says, have you done this on purpose today and gone and drove into the pond? And he goes, yes, let me die. I don't want to live anymore. I hate life. I want to die. 88 years old. That's so sad. So he's, he's just drove himself into the pond on his mobility scooter. 88, yeah. No kids, no family, that's what he said. What a shame. Mm -hmm. It is. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was talking to Mel about that job. Yeah, yeah, we're ready to go. You can clear us. Uh, Jared? Yeah? I've got another update on that. On, on what? The drowning. Oh, yeah? He died at hospital. Did he really? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. How quick did we get there? Oh, we got there quick enough, didn't we? But... Oh, shit. Well, what has he died of? Secondary drowning. Oh, really? So he's got to have been under for a while then. Mm. He's not, yeah, he's died. Yeah. We just found out he called. Oh, man. Oh, I thought you found out he was a suicide, suicide attempt. attempt. I didn't see that coming at all. Take a few drinks? Yeah. Oh, man. People do die, and we know they die, but you're not normal if it doesn't affect you. I've dealt with thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs, but there are probably four or five that I still think about. And he will remember that job probably now, like I remember my jobs. But you do have to think, you have done your best to get to somebody. She needs to push. push. She got to push. She got to push. Push. She needs to push. Push. Push this baby out. We're getting to the stage now where we either need to have the baby or we need to go to... The, we don't know what baby's doing in there. We can't monitor baby. You can feel him kicking and moving and having a lovely wriggle. So you, you've got to... I know. Good, good. Just like that. Good girl. Up, up we go. Up we go. Push, 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 push. Push, push hard, push, come on. You can do this, come on. Push. You can, you can, you're nearly there, you can, come on, push. Push, push. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, it's here, the head's here, the head's here, nearly. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, push, push, keep going. Push, push. push. the head's there. Good girl. Okay, my darling. Well done. Stop okay, it. Okay, tells you to. Let's meet this little boy. Yeah. Okay. Good, here we go. All right, Nat? Yeah, we're all good. Awesome. Push, 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 push. Keep pushing, keep pushing. He's just oh, yeah. loving the baby. Oh, oh gosh, here he is. Well, you see, Dad? Push. Come in. He's here. Awesome. Oh, there he is. Hello. Watch your breath and push. OK, I've got it. OK. One more push. Yeah, it's turning, it's turning. I've got him. Yay! Oh, okay, I'll keep going, keep, keep going, keep pushing my darling. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, you did it. Well done. Well done. Oh, no. 
my job. Sometimes between life and death stands a paramedic. I'll never forget a lady said to me once, this can't be happening. Ten minutes ago he was drinking a hot chocolate. And that is the reality. People's lives can change within ten minutes and we're there through the whole time. Then you get back to station, you put the keys in the cupboard, you put your drugs away and you pick your child up from brownies on the way home because life goes on. Yeah, he's breathing, 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 he's breathing